Hello, my name is Jimmy Vegas and welcome to this, the sixth in a series of video tutorials on how to create an Android and iOS game for Unity 5. So this episode we're going to focus on writing some scripts for keeping score. This also involves us using some GUI to display our score on the screen. So first things first, what we're going to do is actually set up our GUI itself. Now, the idea of um, GUI is to kind of enable you to display anything you want on top of whatever is here that we've built in the screen. So if we go to game object, go to UI, and let's go to text. Let's put this text over here, and let's just type in score with a colon and zero. Now if we double click this text here, it will zoom right out of this particular scene. There we go. So you can see that we have score there. This big white rectangle right here represents our screen. So if we want our score to be in the top left of our scene, all we need to do is over here where it's got rect transform, you'll see here center, middle, and this is called an anchor. If you click on this, and click on this one, this will anchor the position of your score to the top left corner. If you want it in the top right, you would use this one. Center, you would use this one, and bottom, you would use them. Um, but for now, like I say, I'm going to use top left, so make sure you have this one clicked. Next thing you need to do is zero out the position. So pos x is zero, pos y is also zero, and you'll see that it's now moved up here, dead center of the anchor point. So our next task is to move this into a place where we feel comfortable, where it looks at least somewhat decent to be a score. So I'm going to bring it down and across to about there. So whatever the size of your window now, because it's anchored to this top left position, it will always display just below and just across from your screen. So it will always display in this position. Let's move it back just there. Okay next I'm going to change, uh, let's change the font size to change it to 20 because it's a bit bigger. Let's click here and have it bold. I'm not going to change any of the um, alignment options just here, we'll leave that as they are. Um, we won't worry about the overflow. All that means is that once it gets to the end of the width of the box it carries on to the next line. So if you leave it to uh, wrap, it will carry on. However, you can go to overflow and it will just carry on, but it will be invisible because the box itself ends here at 160. So let's leave it on wrap. Uh, same with vertical overflow, same principle applies. Uh, color, I'm gonna set this as a white color. So it's a bit more visible on our screen. So if we press play now, we'll be able to see, because the background is so dark, it just means that we can see our score a bit clearer. Uh, let's rename, so right click, rename, let's call this, just call it score, something nice and simple. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now we have the basic setup for our GUI. We don't really need to go into too much detail. I'm not gonna delve into font styles, at this point, we might do it at a later point. If you've played the Keep Flying game that we have on um, our Game Studio website, you'll know that the tech, the uh, font itself is different than Arial, but we'll get into that at a later point. So we're gonna write a script now, which will keep track of our score. So for, as we're flying along, our score increases. So to do that, make sure you're in your scripts folder. Uh, right click, create, JavaScript, and let's just call this scoring system. And let's open that up. Uh, for me, MonoDevelop, or for you, maybe Visual Studio, or MonoDevelop, whichever one you have, makes no difference. So this script is gonna be something that we need to reference from other scripts as well. So you need to delete everything it gives you. And the first variable that we need needs to be a static variable. Um, I can't remember if we've done static variables in this series. Uh, I don't think we have. 
So a static variable in this case is something which can be referenced from another script. So previously we've stated variables, for example, when we did the star rotation, we did var speed. Uh, the speed function, or the variable I should say, can be used in any of the functions in that same script. However, if you try to use that speed function in a different script, you cannot do it. It needs to be a static variable to do that. So for that, you type static, var, and let's just have this one as the score. That will be of type integer, so int, and semicolon. So this particular variable will keep hold of the score that we have set. The next variable that we need to use is one which will um, display this particular score. So it will need to interact with the GUI that we've just created. So we need var. This doesn't need to be a static one because this will only ever be referenced within this script itself. Um, score display and that will be of type game object. And remember, um, case sensitive when you're doing your script, so it's capital G, capital O on game object. And don't forget your semicolon at the end. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go on this line and I'm going to put a function start. Uh, open close bracket, open curly bracket. I'm going to leave a couple of lines and I'm going to close. So I'm going to ignore this function just for now. And I'm going to go further down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my own function. In this case, we're going to call it, um, let's, do, let's call it add score. Open close bracket, open curly bracket. Now, this is a function that we're creating ourselves. And it will be something that we reference um, in the start function in just a minute. It will all make sense anyway. What we need to do is do, let's do the score plus equals. Now, the reason we put plus equals is because whatever number we put after this makes it add itself to whatever the value of the score is currently equal to. So let's say five for now. And then colon. And then what we need to do is display our actual score. So we need to reference the game object variable that we set earlier. So score display. And we need to get component of that particular object. So get, sorry, dot get component. And then um, we need to dot and open spiky bracket. And we need to reference the text, close spiky bracket, open close bracket. Now, you may be wondering why we do this. Generally, it's just the way of uh, the script being able to tell Unity itself what is going on here. It's just it's the way, the way it works for itself. It's like its own language. Dot text, and that's a lowercase t on that text. Then that needs to be equal to, and if you remember what we set our original text as in score, it is score, then it's a colon, and then it's a space. And at the moment, it's just zero. So we need that to change. So we need to put score, colon, space, and then a quote again. And then we need to put the actual value of what the score is. So plus the score, and then semicolon. Next line down, close curly bracket, and let's save that there for now. So as this stands at the moment, this won't do anything. Although it's adding to the score in the add score function, we're not actually invoking this add score function at all. So we need to do something in the function start called invoke repeating. And all this does is it kind of allows the add score function to be repeated after a certain length of time and how many times in a second, for example, it can be used. So we need to put invoke repeating and then open bracket. And here 
we need to put in quotes the name of our function. In this case, add score, and then close quote, comma. Now the next number is um, how long you have to wait before this particular line or function starts for the first time. So if we put, for example, one, then it means that after one second of this script starting, it will start add score. So then you put your comma, and the next one is how often it will start from then. So in this case, let's do 0 0.1, close bracket, semicolon. So what this line is doing is after one second, which is just here, it's starting add score. Then after 0 0.1 seconds, it's repeating it. After another 0 0.1 seconds, it's repeating it again. After another 0 0.1 seconds, it's repeating it again, and so on. So it infinitely repeats at this time interval. So let's save that now. Head back into Unity. Game object. Create empty. Let's right click, rename. And let's call this something that we can relate to. So let's call it um, score keeper. So it's an object that we'll put this scoring system on. Uh, we need to, I've just noticed down here in console, we have uh, an error. Um, it says, did you mean UTUI.txt? You may get this error. What you need to do is at the start of your script, you need to import Unity dot ui save okay that's yeah I've, I've not done that quite right my apologies let's try that again import un in fact let's get rid of that save it and let's focus on the error itself So we need to import unityengine.ui, it says not unity.ui. So import unityengine.ui, semicolon, and save. Head back in. And that error has now cleared. Sorry, that's, that's my fault. I, I should have mentioned that first of all. Um, all this is is just importing what it, the script, what it needs. Um, when using uh, text down here, this particular line. Um, and when I first tried to import it, put unity.ui, I forgot the word engine. So it is import unity engine.ui. So if you do get that error, you need to put that line of code just there. So let's save that again, head back to unity. You need to then drag and drop scoring system onto scorekeeper. You can see over here you've got the um, score display non game object. So you need to drag and drop your score text, which we created earlier in this tutorial, drag and drop over here. Now let's press play and see if this works. So you can see the score going up, even though we're still off the edge, we ran out of space, the score is still going up. So you'll notice it doesn't start instantly it waits for that one second before it begins. So if you want it to begin instantly, you could put a zero there. Save, back into Unity, press play, and it should start pretty much straight away, and it does. So I always like to have the one second there just to give a bit of a buffer. So it makes a bit more sense. You can have that as maybe half a second, two seconds, whatever you want. We may change that later on, depending on how far we go with um, the scoring system itself. Because in the next tutorial, what I want to do is, you remember when we created this star? Well, my intent is, when we fly our, our rocket, we're going along, we're earning our score. Uh, next tutorial, we're going to put a trigger on here. So when we collect our star, it gives us an extra, say, 500 points. So the next episode is all is going to be all about triggers. So the first one we're going to do is on the star, and then we're going to work on a planet, and probably deal more with 
uh, the canvas and the UI to create ourselves a death screen. So we crash into, say, this planet, we get a death screen. From there, what we're going to do is we're going to expand all of our level. And then eventually we'll get to a point where we can randomly generate the rest of the level that's ahead of us without needing to worry too much. So if you want to do something as an exercise, just to make sure your score is working quite nicely, you can take this for now, your background and your invisible ground and roof, and just drag them further along or expand them or just create duplicates of them and carry on and see how far your rocket can go. So for example, if we press play now and keep our rocket flying nice and high, about there, you can see that our score will always carry on. If you want to do a different scoring system, then that's entirely up to you. You don't necessarily have to put five. You could put, let's use an example of 100. Save, and I've closed that by mistake, but saved anyway. Let's get that open again. So that's, just did say 100, didn't it? Yep, yeah, so 100. You have whatever scoring system you want. If you don't actually want a scoring system at all in this respect, only if you collect something, then you can just leave this as zero for now. But this script is still essential because it does still keep track of your score. So one last example before we go. If we have that as zero and save, your score will never increase. However, even though it's not increasing, it's still keeping track of the score. So when we make our collectibles, for example, the star just here, it will still add to our score. So I'm going to change that back to five. If you're having problems with this particular script, you can go over to our website and download it for free. It won't cost you anything. Just go to the Download and Assets section and click on the Plum series, I believe it is, and you can find it in there. So until next episode, um, yeah, thank you very much for watching.